Hello guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. In this week's video I'm going to be showing you how to check the ignition timing on this 1990s Honda CG125. Now it's got a points ignition system and if you haven't seen the previous video you might want to check that one out first. And in that video I show you how to replace the contact breaker and adjust the points gap using feeler gauges and we also check the ignition timing by eye. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use a Xenon timing light to do a dynamic test so we can check our ignition timing to make sure that we've got it spot on. There are various different tests you can do to check your ignition timing. You can do static tests, which means they're done while the engine isn't running. And that's talked about in the Haynes manual where you use a multimeter or a test lamp. But this is a dynamic method using a timing light because it's done while the engine is running. And in my opinion, that's much more accurate because you get a physical representation of when the engine is actually firing. The downside to this method is that it is a little bit more expensive as you've got the initial cost of buying the timing light and you'll also need a 12 volt battery or 12 volt jump pack, which I'm sure lots of you have already got anyway, um, to run the timing light. This is a timing light I've gone for. It's made by Draper. So let's see what we get in the box. And I'll put a link to this in the description below. So if you want to get one, you can buy it through the link. And if you buy it through the link, you'll also be supporting the channel. So thank you if you buy it through the link. You don't pay any more for it. It just means I get a small kickback off of your purchase. And I've gone for a highly rated product here. It says this product is for use on 12 volt car ignition systems only, not suitable for motorcycles or vehicles with positive earth. Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Let's remove the flywheel cover. On the flywheel, we've got markings here. I spoke about it briefly in the previous video, but I'm just gonna go over it again. We've got a T, and that stands for top dead center, and the lollipop stick next to it. When that lines up with the line here on the backing plate, that means the engine's at top dead center. If we rotate the engine a little bit more, we've got an F and the lollipop stick next to it. The F stands for fire, and this is the point at which the contact breaker should open and the spark jumps across the plug. This engine rotates anti-clockwise, so as the engine is spinning round, it comes up to the top of the compression stroke. And just before the engine reaches the top of its compression stroke at top dead center, the spark plug fires on the F mark, and that will force the piston back down on the power stroke. So we need to check that at the F, our spark plug is firing. If we say that the timing's too advanced, it means that the spark is firing a bit too early, so before it reaches the F mark. And if we say the timing is retarded, it means it's sparking a little bit too late, so past the F mark. And so for optimum performance, we want our sparks to fire as the F reaches the mark on the backing plate. So we can see clearly using the timing light, I've just got some tip X and I'm going to mark a line on the flywheel where the F is and I'm going to mark the indent on the backing plate as well. This is a very basic timing light, it hasn't got any adjustments on it, it's just got a trigger switch to turn it on and off. This connects onto the spark plug lead and this connects to your battery. So red on the positive terminal and black on the negative. And now we get the inductive pickup and put this over the spark plug lead. It's worth noting it does have an arrow on it and this points towards the spark plug. I'm now gonna start the engine. Our timing light flashes every time that the spark plug fires. It looks irregular in the video because there aren't enough frames per second in this video footage, but in real life it's flashing at a regular pace. If we point our timing light at the flywheel, it will illuminate our mark every time that the engine fires. And because that line doesn't match up with a mark on the backing plate, it's showing us that our timing's out and that we need to adjust our points to bring these lines back together. 
In last week's video I showed you how to adjust the ignition timing, so I won't go over it again, but here you can see I'm just making a slight adjustment to the points to bring these lines closer together. I'm just going to nudge the points across ever so slightly. Let's try that. It's out of tolerance now i've completely messed it up it is a little bit of trial and error getting this timed perfectly so as you adjust the points move them ever so slightly and if your mark on the flywheel moves closer to the reference mark on the backing plate you know you're moving the points in the right direction and once you get your engine timed up perfectly it should look something like this Before we refit the engine cover, I just want to check our points gap to make sure it's still within specification. So I'm going to rotate the flywheel round until the piston's at top dead centre. That's the T mark on the flywheel, remember? And I'm going to get my feeler gauge, um, and the specification is between 0.3 and 0.4 millimetres. So let's measure the gap. And this is a 0.33 millimetre feeler gauge. That's the closest I've got to the specification. And that's a nice tight sliding fit. Which means it's within specification. In terms of reviewing this timing light, it's a very basic unit, but it does the job. The light's bright enough to see the marks on the flywheel. The leads are fairly long and that's all I can really say about it. So I'll put a link to this in the description below if you need to get one. We've got a few benefits now that the engine's timed up nicely. It should start much easier. You're going to have better fuel economy and you're also going to have better performance out of the engine. So it's definitely worth doing and I hope you found value in this content. If you have, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you click the alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. All that's left for me to do now is take it out for a little spin and see how it's performing out on the road.